And thanks for joining me. I am Martin Sanbu. I'm an economics commentator with the Financial Times in London. And I'm joined by Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda.、Uh, Mr. Kuroda, thank you very much for joining us. You have been the governor of the Bank of Japan for eight years.、Uh, it's been more and more popular to say we are all Japanese now, or at least we're all learning from Japan, because not only has the Japanese economy、uh, exhibited patterns that other Advanced economies have later followed, but the Bank of Japan has been a pioneer of many new instruments, new ways of doing monetary policy over the years、mm. that other central、mm-hmm. banks have later adopted. So it, it is a, a pleasure and a great value、uh, to have you talk to us.、Uh, mm-hmm. And what of your new innovations have to do with、mm-hmm. climate change? Central banks all over the world are now thinking about how to engage with the big. Uh, humanity's global challenge of climate change in their way.、Uh, so, in this interview,、uh, we will get your views on, on how central banks should think about climate change and what the BOJ specifically is doing to, to do its part.、Uh, so, let me welcome you. And before we get into the specific questions about climate change, I would just like to ask you a general question about the economic outlook, both in the world and in Japan. Japan Has relatively to some other advanced economies、uh, got through the pandemic in, in reasonably better shape, both in terms of the health crisis and the economic outcomes.、Uh, but of course, it's a big challenge for you as for everyone else. So, could we start by you setting out how you see the current economic situation, the short term outlook, and the challenges for monetary policy? Yeah, okay.、Um, as you may know, Japan's economy. Has picked up as a trend, although it has remained in a severe situation due to the pandemic.、Uh, the annualized、uh, real GDP growth rate was minus 4.2% in the first quarter, but it turned positive and became plus 1.9% in the second quarter. In the corporate sector, a virtuous、uh, cycle is operating, particularly in the manufacturing sector. On the back of firm recovery in overseas economies, Japan's exports and production have continued to increase very steadily. As a result, corporate profits have recovered to the pre pandemic level, leading to a pickup in business fixed investment. In contrast, private consumption has remained stagnant, mainly due to strong downward pressure. On the face to face services sector, which is, of course, most susceptible to the spread of COVID 19 and public health measures. Looking forward, Japan's economy will recover with the impact of COVID 19 waning gradually due to further progress in vaccination. As of now, 50% of total population and 90% of elderly people have been. Fully vaccinated, meaning twice vaccinated in Japan. Further progress in vaccination will make it easier to protect public health and improve consumption activities simultaneously. Under these circumstances, private consumption is highly likely to pick up again, partly supported by the materialization of so called pent up demand. Meanwhile, overseas economies, mainly advanced economies, will continue growing at a relatively high pace. In this situation, the virtual cycle from profit to business fixed investment in the corporate sector will continue operating despite being affected by the semiconductor shortage and supply chain disruption, such as in Southeast Asia. So, the Baseline scenario. Our baseline scenario is that the virtual cycle will intensify in the overall economy on the back of a recovery in private consumption and firm development in the corporate sector. 
That said, of course, this uh, main scenario is subject to some uncertainty uh, because of COVID-19 uh, variants and so on and so forth. By the way, as you said, uh, the Japanese economy and uh, other developed economies uh, are somewhat different at this juncture, particularly in terms of uh, inflation. In the US and in many European countries, inflation rate has picked up quite sharply, mainly 3% or 4% and so on and so forth, well above the 2% inflation target uh, their central banks have, uh, have uh, instituted. On the other hand, in Japan, the inflation rate excluding fresh food was minus 0.2% for July this year. Uh, so uh, inflation pressure in Japan has been weaker than in the US and Europe. Uh, however, the underlying inflationary dynamics uh, are not so weak as the headline inflation rate, given that the inflation rate was pushed down by more than one percentage point due to a large reduction in mobile phone charges following uh, Japanese request, uh, Japanese government request. In fact, excluding temporary factors such as mobile phone charges and energy prices, the inflation rate has been slightly positive. Uh, so uh, uh, as I can say that unlike during past deflation period uh, from 1998 through 2013, uh, unlike that period, uh, uh, firms' price cut aimed at stimulating demand have not been widely observed, uh, despite continuing weakness in demand due to COVID-19. So this shows that underlying inflation has been steadily, steady uh, compared with the degree of deterioration in the output gap. So uh, on the surface, yes, inflation rate uh, in Japan is still low. Uh, particularly compared with inflation rates in Europe and the US. But underlying trend is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, more positive. Uh, and we expect that uh, inflation rate would uh, steadily uh, go up uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, eventually uh, <coughs> reach uh, 2% uh, inflation target. Although, not uh, before 2023. 20, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the past that you refer to, the past experience of very low inflationary pressures is, as you know well, the reason why some critics of the Bank of Japan ah. think that it, it, it is not credible in its efforts to, uh, mm. to reach mm. the target. Uh, what I hear you say now is that at least this time around, this time is different. Um, and the, the various price pressures we see very clearly in other advanced economies that have to do with the disruption to supply chains uh, because of the pandemic will, in the end, help you to, uh, to finally reach target. 2023 is not that far away, certainly by, uh, by comparison with, uh, with the past Japanese experience. Yeah, we still think that uh, uh, inflation rate in uh, 2023 uh, would be uh, less than 2%, um, 1% or slightly uh, more than 1%, but still well below 2%. So uh, probably uh, we need uh, 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 slightly more than two years to reach uh, the 2% uh, inflation target. But uh, I'm hopeful that uh, with the current uh, very accommodative monetary policy, they continued, uh, and uh, the, the, the various uh, uh, policy measures taken by the government to stimulate the economy and to uh, improve the structure of the economy, I think uh, we can uh, achieve uh, 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 an inflation target and we can uh, really uh, leave uh, uh, deflation out of sight. So d does that mean that if, if inflation were to disappoint and fall below the path you're expecting, you do stand ready mm. to do more? Oh, yes. Uh, officially, 
uh, we uh, express uh, that uh, policy uh, commitment uh, by saying that if necessary, we would uh, further uh, uh, relax our monetary policy by way of reducing in interest rate and so on and so forth. So uh, you are right uh, in saying that the, the Bank of Japan is committed to achieve the inflation target, the 2% inflation target, as, uh, as, as, uh, uh, as soon as possible or at the earliest possible time uh, uh, by making our monetary policy as flexible as possible and as accommodative as, as possible, uh, depending on the uh, economic uh, and, and price situation. You made a passing reference to structural change in the economy, and I would like to hear your thoughts about that, because there, there are many people who believe that uh, we are seeing a, a big change in how both domestic and the global economy work, mm. partly because of the pandemic, partly because of permanent policy responses mm. after the pandemic, probably mm. higher investment rates, uh, mm. also to do with climate change, uh, mm. more redistributive policies, more active macroeconomic fiscal policy in many countries. Uh, and mm. even from before the pandemic, there was an argument that the demographics are taking a turn away from the downward pressure they put on global interest rates in the last few decades. And as aging completes in many big economies, mm. we are going to see a reversal towards higher natural interest mm. rates, equilibrium interest rates. So there are many things happening um, that could be important mm. permanent changes. And I would love to hear your view of where mm. the global economy and the Japanese economy is likely to, to land, as it were, in structural terms once we mm. have the pandemic behind us. Yeah. Uh, a few things. One, as you know, uh, the Japanese uh, population has been aging uh, for some time. Uh, that means that the working age population has uh, been declining uh, ahead of uh, many uh, developed countries. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if you look at the labor statistics, you can find that uh, the labor participation of uh, elderly people, labor participation of uh, women, they have substantially increased, uh, 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 becoming uh, more than in many uh, uh, developed countries, including the United States. Uh, that is one point. Second point, uh, among G7 countries, actually the <coughs> labor productivity uh, level in Japan is not so high, but labor productivity increase, growth, has been probably the fastest among G7 countries in the last uh, several years. So uh, productivity uh, increase, uh, I think, is quite important and could overcome uh, uh, demographic uh, uh, change, uh, aging population, and so on and so forth. This is quite important. And third, I think uh, the, the various uh, structural uh, changes, structural reforms, uh, are quite important. And, uh, and uh, for instance, uh, 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 the government has been uh, very active in uh, uh, deregulating various sectors, including uh, IT sectors. Uh, and also the government has been very active in uh, uh, liberalizing the labor market uh, quite substantially. And also uh, our uh, international trade uh, not only with uh, other G7 countries like US, uh, European countries, but also with Asian countries have uh, substantial increase. And uh, the uh, investment by Japanese companies in Asia and also Asian companies' investment in Japan, both of them have uh, substantially increased. So uh, the uh, uh, globalization, 
as well as uh, closer uh, economic interaction uh, uh, with uh, uh, Asian countries, uh, I think have uh, um, sort of revitalized uh, the, the economy. So, uh, as I said, demographic change, uh, which is anyway uh, coming to almost all developed countries or even to uh, emerging economies like China, and the importance of uh, uh, productivity increase uh, through various uh, structural uh, uh, reform and 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 uh, R and D uh, investment and so on. So, on. so I, 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 as I said, uh, there are a lot of uh, problems, but uh, uh, with increased uh, 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 interaction with uh, uh, Asian economies. Uh, including uh, very uh, uh, rapidly increasing uh, Asian economies, uh, I think uh, could uh, provide uh, uh, momentum to grow. That, that is fascinating, especially mm. as also in Europe and in the US, we are at the start of what seems to be a, a big period of structural reforms. Uh, the message I'm hearing is that, uh, that the years of strong performance, economic performance in Japan is not just something of the past, but Japan is very much also a country and an economy mm. of the future. So let us turn to that future challenge that everyone is now trying to tackle seriously, which is climate change. Uh, you know very well that there is a debate in many places uh, about central banks' proper role in the fight against climate change. And indeed, there are many who think that central banks should not have a role uh, mm. in climate change, that that's something to leave for elected governments, regulation, and other economic policies. Now, mm. the Bank of Japan has just launched a climate change strategy. Uh, I would like to invite you to tell us what you think uh, should be the way central banks have to think about climate change and, and why and how it is right yeah. for them um, to develop policies um, to engage with it. Yeah, of course, uh, as everyone knows, uh, climate change is a global challenge that will have a broad impact on our society and economic activity into the future. And the effects of excessive greenhouse gas emissions are not limited to one country, but spread to other countries all over the world. Moreover, today's excessive greenhouse gas emissions will have far-reaching future effects. So in order to address climate change, various groups and organizations that make up the society will need to take responsible actions for the sake of the planet. Farms have been acting to reduce greenhouse gas emissions under their own initiative, while at the same time maintaining their accountability to a wide range of stakeholders, such as investors and consumers, through disclosure and other means. Financial institutions have been stepping up their efforts in such areas as green finance. Consumers have also become more conscious of the environment. In this situation, it is becoming more and more important for central banks to take necessary responses in line with their mandate, in line with their mandate. The Bank of Japan published a comprehensive strategy on climate change in July. The strategy consists of five areas, monetary policy, financial policy, financial system, research, international finance, and the Bank of Japan's business operations and external uh, communications. And uh, in particular, I would like to uh, 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 make some uh, uh, comments and explanations uh, on what kind of uh, uh, monetary policy to address climate change uh, has been uh, uh, decided uh, by the Bank of Japan. Uh, of course, the Bank of Japan, like other central banks, have been examining possible monetary policy measures to address climate change while keeping consistency with our mandate. Uh, so recently we have decided to introduce a new fund provisional measures to provide funds 
to financial institutions against investment or loans they make to address climate change. And this uh, new measure gives uh, consideration to market neutrality as much as possible. Uh, specifically, the decision on which investment or loans uh, will contribute to address climate change is basically left to private financial institutions. Uh, so the Bank of Japan does not uh, uh, dictate or uh, does not decide which uh, investments uh, or loans are uh, uh, green or not. Uh, so in this way, we try to avoid any direct involvement in micro-level resource allocation. But at the same time, uh, we impose some discipline on uh, financial institutions so that their investment would uh, uh, actually uh, contribute uh, uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. Uh, this is, uh, uh, in some sense, quite uh, 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 delicate and, uh, and uh, fine uh, position, position and uh, policy uh, framework. But I'm quite sure that uh, this uh, new measure uh, will have advantage of being flexible to the fluid external environment surrounding climate change. For, for example, there is still debate over taxonomy, taxonomy on climate change, and no international agreement has been reached. Uh, but given the urgency of addressing climate change, waiting, so, waiting for such agreement to be reached would not be appropriate. I think the measure is therefore designed to be flexible to change in the situation. So we start, uh, uh, as I said, uh, quite fast, as, as fast as possible, but with uh, enough uh, flexibility to adapt to the changing uh, situation uh, uh, and also uh, changing uh, conditions. Uh, uh, or, or relating to uh, uh, climate change. And uh, I think uh, we are currently making uh, practical preparations and the fund provisioning is expected to start by the end of this year, by the end of this year. And, uh, and the, really we hope uh, the new measure will serve as a catalyst uh, to further encourage Japanese uh, financial institutions and firms to address uh, climate change. This is really uh, uh, crucial and critical. As you know, uh, I was uh, president of the Asian Development Bank uh, also for eight years, <laughs> uh, from uh, 2005 through uh, uh, 2013. And, uh, and climate change was a big issue for uh, developing countries, emerging economies in Asia. And ADB uh, provided uh, substantial technical assistance, financial assistance, uh, policy advice uh, to uh, 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 mitigate the climate change and adapt to the climate change. And, uh, this uh, uh, experience uh, 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 led me to uh, uh, start as, as quickly as possible our uh, support, our uh, positive uh, uh, policy measures to address uh, this uh, uh, very important uh, and, uh, and uh, decisive uh, uh, global issue. Uh, and of course, uh, it's uh, uh, a big Japanese issue as well. Of course. Uh, the mm -hmm. reference you make to market mm -hmm. neutrality, I think, is, is very much uh, to the point. It yeah. illustrates yeah. this, uh, yeah. this trade-off between yeah. uh, the obvious externalities you mentioned in, in climate mm -hmm and the principle that central banks should not be involved in, in direct uh, capital allocation. So it's very interesting to hear about how you at the Bank of Japan have decided to strike that compromise. 
Uh, let me just ask about some details of the policy so, so all of us can, can understand precisely what it is you're doing. Uh, am I right in comparing it with the sort of financing facilities we've seen, for example, the TLTRO at the ECB, the funding for lending at the BOE, a financing facility for financial institutions to reward them for issuing certain kinds of loans to the real economy? Mm -hmm. In this case, of course, it's, it's green loans. In those other cases, it was, it was more business loans generally. Yeah. But is that the right way of, of thinking about it? Is that a fair comparison? That, that's right. That's right. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, financing mechanism or back financing mechanism uh, the Bank of Japan uh, would uh, install is uh, the system as you, ex you uh, explained exactly. I mean, of course, the Bank of Japan itself has uh, uh, had uh, various uh, uh, Finance provisioning uh, measures to uh, 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 improve the economic uh, structure and so on and so forth. But this is really a uh, 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 big, big thing. Uh, and uh, probably once installed, uh, we would uh, continue uh, at least uh, this uh, uh, major facility for 10 years. For 10 years. And, yeah, and as you said, it's, it's flexible. <laughs> it, it's flexible. You can uh, adapt yeah. the terms over time. Uh, my yeah. understanding is that the, uh, the incentive for banks to take up this facility is that they get a somewhat better treatment uh, on the tiering system for their reserves uh, yeah. with the Bank of Japan that the, the macro right. add-on balance is That's increased. Right. Uh, yeah. But, but you said that you are not the one setting the criteria for what counts as a green loan. Could you explain that? There, there must be some criteria for what sort of loans qualify. Uh, so yeah. how, do you, how do you do that? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we, uh, we do not uh, uh, try to micromanage uh, uh, this measure. But at the same time, of course, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, provide uh, those uh, uh, financing to uh, 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 loans and investment uh, to be made by financial institution to address climate change. So uh, naturally, uh, uh, so-called green bond, green loans, and uh, 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 and other uh, kind of uh, loans and and uh, and uh, investment, which uh, uh, would uh, uh, contribute to uh, reducing uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the, in the economy, and uh, so basically uh, that sort of thing, but. Since uh, uh, there is no international taxonomy, uh, we would uh, uh, basically uh, uh, encourage uh, financial institutions to uh, make loans and investment uh, to uh, 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 reduce uh, uh, CO2 gas emissions and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and uh, we uh, would uh, 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 make them to uh, disclose uh, what kind of uh, 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 loans and investment uh, they are making. So if I understand you right, uh, mm -hmm. you, the banks will have to satisfy you that this, these loans go to green carbon reducing uh, purposes, but you are flexible in terms of the way they will satisfy you that that is the case. That's right. That's right. And, and I suppose that you expect then that the result in the market will be that non-financial corporation will find it cheaper than it would otherwise be to finance mm. precisely these, these sorts mm. of projects. That, that is the end goal, I would think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And, and just one last question about this. Why have you chosen to uh, deploy <laughs> this kind of instrument rather than the sort of thing that the, uh, the European Central Bank and, and the Bank of England are thinking about, which is more to sort of tilt their collateral framework uh -huh. towards greener or better disclosed um, bonds. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, you see, the, of course, uh, 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 we will continue to uh, uh, purchase uh, not only uh, uh, JGBs, but also corporate bonds. And uh, corporate bonds issued as green bonds are also eligible uh, for bond purchases and as collateral, uh, like other uh, 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 bonds uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So we will not exclude uh, green bond uh, uh, issued uh, from our uh, corporate bond purchase uh, program. Uh, but as I said, uh, at this stage, uh, uh, there's no uh, international agreed uh, taxonomy. And, uh, and uh, eventually, I think uh, the taxonomy could be agreed. But at this stage, no, I think. So we would, uh, uh, as I said, encourage financial institutions to uh, 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 provide loans and investment uh, to uh, uh, firms uh, which uh, make uh, 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 a sustainable and uh, sort of green uh, investment, plant uh, 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 and equipment investment or R and D investment, and so on and so forth. And uh, by so doing, I think we can make a significantly uh, important contribution. Uh, uh, and also, uh, as you know, uh, of course, uh, I know that the ECB. Uh, is uh, likely to uh, start uh, green bond uh, purchase or uh, accepting green bond as, uh, as collateral uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, but as you know, uh, at this stage, uh, the so-called green bond market uh, is still uh, small. And, uh, and as I said, uh, uh, in the Japanese uh, uh, financial system, uh, banks continue to play a significant and important role uh, in uh, uh, developing the economy or uh, reforming the structure of the economy and in this sense uh, to uh, uh, address uh, uh, climate change uh, issue. So we uh, 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 choose we 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 choose this uh, this channel, but as I said, uh, we don't uh, say that we exclude green bond from our bond purchase program. No, we will uh, 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 continue our uh, corporate bond purchase program, and uh, and the green bond uh, would be. Uh, uh, naturally in, included in, in that uh, program, but without any uh, uh, significant favor or some uh, predetermined weight or something. We uh, naturally uh, purchase corporate bond, including uh, green bonds from the market. Indeed, it's, it's a very interesting uh, strategy for recruiting and mobilizing the private financial institutions in making these discriminations between what is green and, and what is less. As I said at the very start, uh, the Bank of Japan has pioneered many monetary policy instruments over the years, and we have all learned tremendously from them, and I'm convinced it will be the same for this. We will all be watching how this works out, watching and learning. Uh, Governor Kuroda, thank you very much for talking to us uh, about this. and. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who's been listening. Yeah.